Hey guys, again, I find myself in the evening after dinner doing a video uh, out of necessity. Normally I don't do videos at night uh, after work, but I wanted to get ahead of the story. Uh, this morning, one of my sons sent me a uh, news clip from local Orlando news and had a picture of my priest and it said, local priest bites woman after denying her communion. So I guess technically the, that's right. He did bite her, he admitted to biting her and he did admit to denying her communion. But if you go in the story, they're suggesting that he denied her communion by the way she was dressed. That is not true. Now, I believe in obedience to authority. This is why I'm a Catholic. So I got permission from my authority in the Catholic Church to make this video. Um, and I said, you know, I'll, I'll use my channel for the service of the church. If it helps the church, I'll make the video. If it's going to hurt the church, I'll ignore it. Uh, and I was given permission to do it. And I think it was wise because there's going to be a lot of fake videos, you know, lying. You know, people lie for clickbait. I'm just going to tell you the truth. So in the news article, and I'm going to tell you uh, a little bit about the priest. I'm not going to give you his names, although I have permission to give his name, but there's a lot of crazy people out there. So I don't want to put his name out there. And I can even show you the video, but there's a lot of, again, a lot of crazy people. So I'm just going to tell you what happened as a parishioner of the church. I'm, I'm not a witness. I wasn't there. I didn't see it. I'm getting it secondhand from very reliable sources, extremely reliable sources. Now, in the news article by the Secular News, they said the police recommended that the father be charged with battery for biting this woman. Um, I can tell you, according to the police, and I have friends in the police department, uh, no, they think the church should actually charge, uh, they, the woman should actually be charged for attempted robbery. And I'll explain why. So the woman comes up in 10 o'clock mass to receive communion. And the father is seen on the video talking to her and then blessing her and just like lovingly, you know, he, he, let me just say this. He's, he's, he's an older priest, very loving, fa he's a very fatherly priest. He, he, he's a very fatherly priest. And you can see him very lovingly telling her that she can't receive it and then blessing her and she moves on. Then she comes back to the 12 o'clock mask. And why she, when she comes up, she literally grabs puts her hand in the consecrated host and grabs him and starts crushing him. them. Now, Father's got his hands filled. He's not going to drop the Eucharist on the floor. So his only option was to bite her hand, and, and she let go, and he protected the Eucharist. That's the duty of the priest. And, and she's seen pushing him. So if anyone assaulted anyone, it was her. And in the state of Florida, we have a stand-your-ground rule law. So he's totally innocent, you know, any legality. But I want to get to the moral issue here in a minute. So, you know, I was a street, you know, I've been in a lot of street fights in Newark and Irvington and the inner city growing up on the streets. I've been in a lot of street fights. And I'll confess, I bit people. <laughs> you know, sounds crazy, but a bite is a very effective self-defense mechanism. People will let go. And that was probably the only way he would get her to let go. And he did it. He did his duty. And the diocese came out and said, they, they made a statement. Um, I forgot I was going to pull it up on my computer and read it to you. But basically, they said a priest's duty is to protect the consecrated host. And he did his duty. Now, before I get into why it's his duty, and I'm going to show this, and, and even a lot of my evangelical brothers may not understand this, I'm going to show you in the scriptures why. He had to do what he did. He had no option. And any good priest would do that. 
But I want to tell you a little bit about the father. Again, I'm not going to put his name out there because there's a lot of crazies, you know, out there. But he's getting, retire, getting ready to retire next week. And the one thing about this priest, I can tell you, is he's loved. He is loved by his congregation because he loves them. You know, if there's any priest watching me, I can tell you, you could give the greatest homily and none of us are going to remember it. <laughs> we might remember it for a day or two. But what we're going to remember is how you make us feel. And this father makes you feel loved and welcomed. But most importantly, listen up. This father makes you feel noticed. I can't tell you the countless numbers of Christians, both when I was a Protestant and now that I'm a Catholic, that feel like they sit in church unnoticed and no one notices them. But when this father, and he's like, a, he's like in his 60s, he's like a grandfather, he sees you, he looks like a father that's so happy to see one of his children and you just feel that love. And you know, I'm a hugger, he's a hugger, we always hug each other and we'll you know, goof around like that. And, and, and everybody feels loved by him. He noticed, you know that he notices you. He lets you know that he notices you. If I could tell any priest watching this, notice your sheep. Notice them. Let them know you notice them. Let them know that you love them. That's more important than anything. Now, Father, I almost gave his name up, gives a great homily. You know, he's written several books, and I plan on having him on here to talk about his books, and maybe we'll talk about this too uh, if, he, if he wants but even, his, I, I can't, you know, some things I remember he said, but what I never forget is how he makes me feel and those around me. Now, honestly, I'm not one of those guys that need to be noticed because I'm going to get noticed <laughs> probably for a bad reason. <laughs> so, um, and if you don't notice me, I'll, I'll probably make myself known. Um, but there's a lot of people, a lot of people that are just... They just sit in a pews quiet and there could be a thousand people in that church and they feel alone. They feel alone and unnoticed. And this great father that I'm talking about, and hopefully I'll have the honor to interview him here. He lets people know they're noticed and they're loved. He's a great pastor. And, you know, and he has a great example. The Holy Father, Pope Francis, he notices everybody, no matter if you're in jail, no matter if you're if you if you got a deformed face and no one wants to look at you, he notices you. And even his critics say, yeah, he's good with the people because he loves the people. So why do priests have the duty to protect the Eucharist? Not only was the good father protecting the Eucharist, he was protecting that woman. And here it is, you know, here it is. There's a warning from St. Paul, the Apostle, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 31. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the chalice after supper, saying, This chalice is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the chalice, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. See, every Christian believed that Jesus meant what he said and said what he's meant up until a couple hundred years ago. In American evangelical circles, and then they exported it through the world, that somehow he meant it symbolically. No, Jesus said it is. And the early church believed it. And Catholics still believe the word of God. We are still Bible-believing Christians. We don't add words like symbolic. Jesus said what he meant, and meant what he said when he said, this is my body. There's no way you could exegete that in the Greek or the Aramaic and come up with any other conclusion. It's a man-made doctrine made by Ulrich Zwingli. And then we go to verse 27. Whoever, whoever, therefore eats the bread 
or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of profaning the body and blood of the Lord. Now, I told you that first mass, when that woman came up, you see the father asking the woman questions. He knew she didn't understand. He could tell that she hasn't taken the Eucharist ever or in a very long time. And he told her that he couldn't give it to her and that she would need to go to confession. And then when she came back to the line a second time, he said, did you go to confession in between mass? And she said, it's none of your business before she grabbed and crunched the consecrated host. So she was eating it. He knew she was eating it in an unworthy manner. And it was his job to protect the host as well as protect her. Because if you listen, it says, let a man examine himself. If you eat the Lord in an unworthy manner, you will be guilty. Guilty of what? Guilty of hurting bread or cracker or cookie or wafer, like a lot of my evangelical friends think it is. No, profaning, profaning the body and blood of the Lord. See, St. Paul knew that it wasn't just bread and, and wine, that it actually literally supernaturally transformed into the body of Christ and his blood. So he's like, if you're eating and drinking this in an unworthy manner, you're profaning it. So let a man examine himself and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment upon himself. That woman was about to eat judgment upon herself. And what happens? What, what, what can this judgment do? Well, St. Paul tells you in verse 30. That is why many of you are weak and ill and some have died. So this is why Christians for 2,000 years have taken the Eucharist seriously. And this is why Catholic priests protect that Eucharist. Like I said, not only was he protecting the Eucharist from desecration, sacrilege, he was protecting that woman from judgment. And, and she really needs to go to confession now. If she is even a believer, to me, it seems like it was planned because she went to two masses. And I believe the second, first, if I'm not mistaken, the first mass was definitely English. And I believe the second mass was Spanish. So for some woman to come to us, English and Spanish mass, and, and oh, and then she told the officers that the priest wouldn't give her her cookie. She wanted her cookie. She referred to the body and blood of Jesus Christ as her cookie. So the father, he knew, he had discernment, and he knew whatever it was that she did or didn't do, he knew that she was not disposed to take the Eucharist. She knew that she was not ready to take the Eucharist. So that's what really happened. Like I said, I got a feeling this is, you know, this is going to get big and people are going to misrepresent what happened. But um, this is a good father and I love him and he's retiring soon and we're going to miss him. Uh, but he promised uh, he would visit and um, Lord willing, we'll have him on the show and you get to know this wonderful man of God. So please pray for my priest because, you know, that. You know, a week before he retires, I think he's, I don't know how long he's been a priest, but he's like, I think 65. He's been a priest a long time. And a week before he retires, the devil, I mean, if it's so clear, the devil attacked him. But what the devil means for evil, God uses for good. And he has the full support of our diocese, of his pastor, of his bishop, and all of his parish love him. We're praying for him. And we got your back, Father. We got your back. God bless and stay Catholic.